Hey guys, if you like my videos, click on subscribe and give me a like. And don't forget the bell so you can get notified of new ones. Hey guys, how's it going? Dale here. Today I have an HP 15 Touch Smart laptop that definitely has a bad hard drive in it. I will try to recover the customer's data. I do that on a separate workstation where I do all my data recovery. I think I can get all of his personal data though. But we're just going to, or I'm going to go ahead and put a brand new solid state 2.5 inch drive in an MX500 series. Crucial. It's 250 gig. That's all he needs. And I got to open it up to do that. So I'm going to open it up to get the old hard drive out. On the bottom here, I've already removed all the screws. Um, this little inspection plate here comes off, or access plate, so you can get to the RAM. Um, this model has actually has a 4 gig stick, a DDR3L, and a 2 gig. I'm going to take this 2 gig stick out. I hate 2 gig sticks of RAM. I'm going to give him a 4 gig, so he'll have 8 gigs of RAM instead of 6. I'm just going to throw that in for him, no big deal. But first, I'm going to remove the battery. Ooh, gotta unlock it. And like I said, I've already removed all the screws. This screw right here, you have to remove to get to to remove the keyboard from the top side. So remember, you gotta make sure you get that one. And this screw here holds the optical drive in right here. We're gonna slide that out. I usually just use. Sometimes if you pull on them too hard, you'll pull the faceplate off. So just use like a paper clip in the eject hole. You get it out, and you can just kind of gently jiggle it out. But all these screws are all the same length, so you don't need to worry about what screw goes in what hole. Um, but also, right along this doorway to the optical drive bay, there are three of these little flathead screws we have to get out. Sometimes they're a little stubborn. Let me see if these ones are, there's three of them here though. But sometimes they come out easy sometimes not but you can see they're very tiny so get all three of those out we're going to remove the palm rest from the top side so we got those out now underneath this Underneath this guy right here, there are three screws under here as well. There's one here, one here, and one here. Again, I've already removed those. When I'm done, i got to remember to put that 4 gauge stick in for them. So we're going to remove the keyboard. we got all the screws out. There's a seam along the top up, top edge of the keyboard that i got this very, very thin tool that I'm going to put in there. And always be careful of your screen to get it started. I'm just going to put a little slight upward pressure on it, and it usually, it usually comes pretty easy, just like that. And then we're going to flip it over, and we're going to disconnect it from the motherboard right here. You got to get my tool. You well, just a second. I don't. I don't like to use metal tools on these clips, so I get my little plastic spudger tool here. We're going to put this little black arm up here. It flips right up. If you get in there, they can see that. It's a little tricky. Just like that. And then this ribbon slides out, and we got our keyboard out. I believe there's five screws under here I'm going to remove. Lock my brakes. And these are all the same length as well. Then I'm going to do a fresh clean install of Windows 10, the new 2004 edition that just came out. So far I like it quite a bit. No issues with it that I've ran into. I'm sure people are having issues with it, but I like it. So I got all five of those screws out. Now I'm going to disconnect this connector right here is for your touchpad. I'm going to flip this little lever up carefully, just like that. And then there's one here for your power switch. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to flip that up. I'm going to disconnect these. 
Nothing too scientific about it. Just don't pull on them too hard. They don't give you a lot of room in here. Ah. I'm kind of stuck. So once you get those disconnected, we're good to go. So I'm going to take my little plastic spudger tool here. You don't really want to use metal tools like this. Start prying in the seam here because you will leave tool marks. So I'm just going to put this in the seam over here. Just kind of start working it. I've done a lot of these HPs, guys. So, but every one is kind of. I look at it as the first time doing it. Each one has their own little quirks. When you're taking them apart. Usually along the back here, they're a little stubborn, but our hard drive is right down in this area right here. And you use gentle but firm pressure along this back here. If you have to get in there with the tool, don't be shy about doing that. Right along this back area here, it can be a little stubborn sometimes. Now, actually, <coughs> oops, fell back down in there. Oh, there it goes. Not too difficult. So we got the whole palm rest off, exposing everything. So be careful when you're in there. So I have to remove this little I.O. board here for the USB and the audio jack. There's one screw right here that we're going to remove right down here in the corner because this hard drive caddy is little notches are underneath of it. Again, there's just one little screw here. Yeah, I'm going to got to kind of jiggle it up here with your tool. I'm going to disconnect it right over here on the main board. I'm going to flip this lever up. Just like that, that flips up and get that out of the way. And here's our hard drive. We're going to put the new SSD in here, the two and a half inch. And this disconnects from the SATA connector on your hard drive, obviously. Try not to pull it off the motherboard, please. This caddy has four screws to hold that holds the hard drive in. I'm just going to use my cord this here real, real, real quick. It's quicker for me. My cordless screwdriver is not a drill. I use it every day, all day. Just speeds thing, things up a little bit for me. So I, like I said, I'm going to go over to my cloning station. Well, Windows install and see if I can get his data off of this hard drive. I'm pretty sure I can, but it's definitely a bad hard drive. I'm going to get my new SATA drive here. I got to get in that camera person's way here and grab my little knife. I've used a lot of these crucial MX500 drives. They're really fast. In my mind, they're equal as good as the Samsung 860 Evos. They perform very well. They cost just a little bit less than the Samsungs. I'll have links down below where you can get the models of these drives that I'm using. So now we're just going to make sure when you put your drive back in, you put it in, you know, the right way in your caddy, otherwise you end up doing it over. Just like that. Once I get the clean install of Windows, and I get all the update, any necessary drivers I have to get from HP, but on these older models, Windows is going to take care of pretty much all the drivers for your video, your precision touchpad, that kind of stuff.
hopefully get the customer's data back on here for him. And the customer is going to reinstall his apps, he's got Office 365, those types of things. Back in. Going to do everything in reverse. Going to push the back in here first. Oh, actually, I lied. My bad. Let's push the front end first. Seems like these HPs are always different. Let's make sure it's down all the way. Our I/O board back in. Don't push on this too hard. <clears throat> Put our one screw back in right here. And reconnect our cable to the motherboard. And when you push these in, just gotta make sure you get it nice and straight. A little pressure on it and clip it down so it's even along the little black line on the cable. Just like that. All right, so we got that in, we're good to go. We're gonna put the palm rest back on. Now, I'm not gonna button this up 100% until I get Windows installed all the way, just in case. But I am gonna snap everything back in place. It doesn't take a lot of force on these. Reconnect our Two cables here. These can be a little tricky sometimes. Just gotta be patient. Oh, there we go. Just like that. Same with this one here for the power switch. Nope, there we go, it falls right in. Snap it all the way down firmly. And I'm gonna go ahead and put my screws back in the palm rest here because we should be okay. Check out some of my other videos. I do a lot of these HPs, a lot of Acers, some Lenovo's, kind of all of them really. But a lot of HPs, a lot of them out there. And I got a video that shows you how to make the USB Windows installation drive. Here's my USB flash drive that I have Windows on. I use the Windows Microsoft media creation tool that you can download for free and again. I have videos that show you how to make these. It's very simple guys So we got our screws back in um, I will go ahead and put the keyboard back in Make sure the little arm is up I like to use plastic tools whenever I can poking around on this stuff for obvious reasons. These sometimes can be real stubborn to get back in straight and all the way. There we go. Now on this connector here, when you push it back down, kind of use firm even pressure on both ends to push it down like that. If you just push in the middle, it's not going to go down. So you have to use either two fingers or two fingers with one hand. And just put it back in just like that. And gently snap it back in place. Not too much force. And here it's snapping back in good, so that's all done. We gotta put our three screws back in along the edge here. And these don't need to be ridiculously tight. Just in, and that's it. <laughs> kind of holds everything together good. So there. 
and we'll slide our optical drive back in place. Just like that. Now I'm going to get rid of this 2 gig stick of DDR3 PC3L. I just don't like 2 gig sticks. I don't know why they do that. It costs an extra buck to put in another 4 gig stick, if that. So now we're going to have 8 gigabytes of RAM instead of just 6. There we go. I got tons of that stuff laying around. I'm going to put the battery back in it. I'm going to put all the screws in on the bottom here once I'm completely done. Make sure there's no issues. Grab a power cord. This got AMD A8 processor in it, I believe. It's about five, six years old. Originally came with Windows 8 when Windows 8 was out. So we're gonna put our flash drive into the USB port. And it should just boot off and automatically, but if not, we just hit F9 to get the boot menu. So let's just turn it on. There, so you can see it boots right up to the Windows 10 setup, 64 bit there. Just gonna hit enter and start the install. And it will automatically activate once Windows 10 or Windows 8, you know, is installed in your computer. It's just always going to activate for you after a clean install. As long as you got an internet connection, of course, which I'm going to hook up right now into the Ethernet port. Get all the Windows updates. There aren't too many right now with the 2004 edition. But I'll check out and see what drivers are available, if any, at HP's website for this model. Then we'll just choose next for English, in my case. Install now. Get this going and I'll see what I can do about getting that data. So that was a pretty simple little hard drive replacement with a SSD, two and a half inch, instead of an old clunky mechanical hard drive. I believe this is only a 500 gig hard drive. Yep. So we're just gonna put, I don't have a product key. Yeah, it's Windows 10 Home. So we hit next. Be a pretty snappy little computer when all of a sudden done. And having that extra RAM certainly won't hurt anything. Next, we're going to choose custom. There's our solid state drive right there. I'm going to click on next here. And get it going. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this up, guys. I appreciate you all watching. I hope it was helpful. Um, check out some of my other videos and please subscribe. Have a great day.